relationships are currency. Like, it's more valuable to have that than money. What's well, Salachi Vibes? Welcome to Quarantine Network, you know, Q and Dub. Okay, good to have you sir. Back. Yes, yeah. sir. What's good? What's good? Doing good. good. You already know. You already know it's your boy OG. You know, we got Moraj Beats. We got Charlie Pockets. You know, <laughs> our special guest, no other than Salachi Vibes. Nice. What's happening? The gang is all back. Yeah, man. Yeah. You know, last time we last time we had you on, you know, you had to dip out. You know, you had some business to handle, which we totally understood. Appreciate you. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Uh, <laughs> uh, how, how's uh? So how's life been since our uh our last encounter? You know, it feels like it's been like five years. It's probably been mm. like what, six months, but. <laughs> <laughs> Something like that, yeah. And about, about eight months. Eight, I feel like I'm like, eight, like a few right. days, you know. <laughs> Man, but life is good. Life is good. I'm blessed. Um, just trying to continue walking in my faith, developing as a woman, business owner, um, artist. You know, just wanting to mm-hmm. continue to be an asset to the community. You know, <laughs> <clears throat> I like that. Yes, sir. Hey, Salachi, tell us uh, more about you. What means Salachi Vox and what means Salachi Rights? Oh, yeah, for sure. So Salachi Vaz, I got that name. I was just, I was actually like probably like 12 years ago or something like that. And at first I had the name, the rap name Exodus, and it was super lame. Like everyone had that rap name at the time. So I was like, Brian, I don't know else. And so... I was like, all right, so what's it going to be? Because it's definitely not going to be my legal name. That mug is way too long. We ain't got time for that, for branding. So I was like, all right, Lord, what's, what do you want? You know? And I was like, I want a first and a last name, but it's got to mean something. It's really got to, you know what I'm saying? Like, it's got to stand out, but it's also got to mean something. So I was looking on Google Translate, you know what I'm saying? Just seeing some parts of my background, because I'm Nigerian. So I just wanted to see if there was anything you know, in my in my background that I could use, but I was right. drawn to like a um, a different language, Galician, mm-hmm. and so I typed in a few words, and I was like, "What do I do?" You know what I'm saying? Like, what do I want people to to feel after listening to my music? So basically, long story short, Salachi Vaz means blessed voice of the sun, and it's less about me and more so about the message behind my music because you know I want people to have an experience with it and so it's less about who I am but more so about what I believe you know, about the musical creative like experience it's just that that's just artists listening to the blessed voice of the sun so it's not really about me but more so the process yes yeah, sir and Salachi writes okay. yeah Salachi writes I just basically so that was actually a diddy move <laughs> I say that because like I wanted everything um, to be under a common umbrella. And so my business venture and my artistry, I wanted to be able to find a, you know, like a lane that merged the two. So being that I'm an artist that's actually an entrepreneur, I build websites, I do artist biographies, I do a lot of writing projects for people. So I was like, all right, so Blessed Voice of the Sun is over here. So what else do I do? I write in ink. So then that was just, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, I naturally, like, in real life, prefer writing with pens over pencils. So I was just like, all right, that's going to be the name of my business. And for branded purposes, no matter if you know me as an artist or as a businesswoman, you're going to come across my content on online. So it's not going to hurt me. It's only going to benefit. So either way, you'll find me. So that's why I chose it. That's actually pretty clever. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's working out pretty good so far. So, so I know you definitely believe the pen is mightier than the sword, huh? I feel like the pen is the sword. I mean, if you think about it, what wars have we fought where it wasn't started with words? I mean, back in you know what I'm saying, like in the ancient times, they wasn't fighting face to face first; they were sending scrolls. 
it was sending notes. You know what I mean? So words is what starts wars, but they can end them too. So for sure. Mm. Definitely. So you said you are Nigerian, uh, but you're in the U.S. And where where are you based? Oh, uh, yeah. So my parents, you know what I'm saying? I'm first generation American. So my dad came here first with nothing but a suitcase. Man, was he's my inspiration, really. Like, my dad is my hero. He just retired in December. Shout out to Pops. Um, but he came here, worked his tail off. You feel me? Went to school. Um, put me, my mom, my sister through school. Um, and so we started out in North Carolina. Um, my family now, they live in the Midwest in Indiana. I'm based in Cali. I moved out here, obviously. I mean, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like clearly industry relevant. You feel me? So I'm, I'm out here in the Bay area. You feel me? Yeah. The gay area, you feel me? Before anybody gets on, jumps on it, correct me. <laughs> nah, you good. <laughs> you good. You good. And and uh, what 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 or who inspires you to be a, a musician, an artist, like an artist or a, a past experience? Man, um, I think one of my first inspirations. And this is going to show my nerdiness, so get ready for this. Um, I actually was drawn to instrumental music first. So, like, in kindergarten, right? Like, it's going to make sense. This story is not going to make sense. Okay. So, I used to go to, like, this, like, hillbilly elementary school, like, back in North Carolina before we moved to Indiana. And, like, they would have, like, in kindergarten, they would make us listen to, like, Mozart and, like, Bach. These cats were, like, for some reason, teaching us, like, German, Russian, like, crazy stuff. I was like, I'm in kindergarten? But the mm. suffice to say, like, the first exposure I had to music was those nap time, like Mozart, Chopin, you know what I'm saying, Tchaikovsky, that stuff. And I was like, yo, barring any disaster, you know what I'm saying? Like, I'm going to play the violin. And so I knew um, as soon as I was like 10 years old and I was old enough to start the music program at school, I was like, bro, hook me up with that violin because that's I want to learn how to make that sound. And so from there, I learned sheet music. I was an orchestra band. I didn't really rap until I was 15. I didn't even listen to hip hop until I was 15. You know what I'm saying? So um, I would say my first, first, like, as far as hip hop goes, like my first inspiration would probably be Lauryn Hill. Um, just because like, I resonated with her music even as a kid. Like I understood where it came from. I didn't understand all the words, but I understood where it came from. So I was like, all right, bet. You know what I'm saying? That's that's probably my first inspiration. Uh, that's a, that's definitely a big inspiration to me. I mean, like, I think of Laura Hill. I don't think of her as just a female MC. She's one of the best MCs, period. And that's how I look at you. You know what I'm saying? Bless. Yeah, we were, we were talking on, about now. that like a few minutes ago. Uh, the other day, Charlie and I, we were watching your last video, uh, First Plane, and, and yes. we were discussing about that. And we were like, damn, bro, we know Sulachi, but even we, if we put that aside, we are listening to Sulachi and we know the, she is one of the best at this moment. Oh man! The lyrics, the lyrics, the vocals, the the flow, the cadence, everything. It's like period, period. period. Yeah. Period. Amen. Like, come on, Vaz, you and I go We're back. We're big fans. Man, so We're like, big fans of your work. So. Come on, Vaz, you and I. You, I know you since high school, man. Like I already knew that you brought the, you brought the pressure every time. I'd be like, yeah. I'd be like, yeah. It's and facts, hey, amen. All glory to God. Honestly, like. I appreciate Amen. you. I appreciate you. Like, really, it's it's just I, I revel in the fact that I get to tell my story and that people, you know, they latch on to it for a reason that's bigger than me. You know what I mean? Like, people just tell me, like, oh, you encourage me or you inspire me or whatnot. And I'm just like, for real? Like, you were paying attention? Like, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So... It, I don't take it's no small thing. Every single person that checks everything out, you know what I'm saying? It, it really means a lot. So appreciate y'all. Definitely. Hey, appreciate you. 
I mean, it's a real deal, man. Like, I mean, let's talk about it. I mean, let's get into it. You know, let's talk about the inspiration behind First Planet. and why, you know, how did you even come up with the title First Planet? Whew. Man, so honestly, all right. So that song is really about the process of, um, you know, coming out to Kelly and the opportunity surrounding that and the decision making surrounding that. So honestly, before I moved out here, I had never been out here to, to, to California. Like the furthest west I had been was like Iowa. So I was like, all right, uh. bet. I don't know nobody out here. I'd only talked to a couple of people on the phone, you know what I'm saying, as far as what to expect when I got here, who was going to pick me up, you know what I'm saying? Like, right. I didn't know anybody out here. So it was just like one of my first, like, you really jumping off the porch. Like, you really leaving, you know what I'm saying? Because Indiana ain't Nevada, you know what I'm saying? Like, it ain't close, you feel me? So. <laughs> Yeah. It was it was like, all right, so this is really like you really going to have to trust God with this move. You know, like this is the first time that you really ain't got no strings attached. Like you going out there with no thing like you have a bag <laughs> and a wallet, you feel me? And a direct deposit that's on the way. I don't even have it yet. You know what I'm saying? My last check was pending <clears throat> for my job. So I was like, all right, bro, like. um. In those moments is when artists, you know what I'm saying, under stress, under duress, you know, those defining moments, you either capture them in song or you miss that moment. And so I was just like, man, I got to I got to write, you know what I'm saying? As soon as we landed, I had already came up with the hook. Um, and within the first two weeks of being in Cali, I had written a song already. Um, so, yeah, that's where that's where that name came from. Oh, now, what was the plane you took? Do you remember the airline? <laughs> if I remember correctly, because I got on, I think when I first came out here, I took the bus to Chicago. Mm. So I want to say it was probably Southwest, to be honest. Because I knew I was, I was trying to spend no extra cake. I was like, bro, just get me there. We ain't going to, through no spirit, though. Like, we ain't going <laughs> I was just thinking. Oh, good I was like, you you been, been, say it ain't spirit. Any airline but spirit, you good. You, you would have been there. To, you would have been there two days later. <laughs> Man, I was. There's one of my lines in one of my freestyles. I think it was Sunshine. I was like, uh -huh. break a new frontier inside of spirit. We going to land it. Mm. <laughs> Listen, like, if you land after getting on that plane, you're blessed. You can. Cause I mean that's all you can expect. That's all you can expect. Like, but hey, real talk though, on some investment type stuff, Frontier and Spirit just merge. So we'll see what happens with that. Ooh, free free game. We'll see what happens that's with sad. that. It might be a move or it might be a swerve. We'll see. I am Charlie. not a financial advisor. <laughs> Charlie Mo, y'all got any y'all got any questions for Salachi about um about first play? Not about first plan. I want to know more about 16 by 16. Mm. Man, okay, 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 okay. I, I, got, I got that beat for the intro that you asked me. It's ready to go. Let's go then. I've been, I've been kind of like touching the waters with 16 for 16, like as far as different formats. Um, Instagram came through now that you can go live with more than one person. So I'm mm -hmm. trying to explore like different ways to get that. But um, for anybody who's watching who don't know what 16 for 16 is, it's an incentive that I started in the hip hop community. Basically, it's just pushing um, we as rappers to, to really just hone our skill. So we take a beat and we listen to it for 16 minutes. Um, write your hottest 16. Um, it averages a minute per bar. And then after that, you get three minutes to rehearse and then you deliver it. And so, um, you know, it's supposed to be in a weekly platform. Um, and then we choose a winner. Season two was dope. Um, but season three, I want to make it, you know what I'm saying? Like, I'm trying to up the stakes. You know what I mean? And so um, been having to fundraise and set aside some some cash for, you know, um, a prize that will really um, lend some support for somebody who can come up with music that fast. And it's dope. You know what I'm saying? And they get those votes. Let's go ahead and get them some, some equipment to, to record that stuff. They don't already have it. Um, just to be a blessing to the next, you feel me? The next, the next generation, the next artist, the next, the next person who's gonna be out here doing anything. Yes, sir. Yeah, man. Sixteen to sixteen is dope. Yeah, yeah I so remember it's, I, tapped, it's, I tapped in a couple episodes. 
it was that you're definitely talented, but that that's a that's a it's a good thing you were running there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm trying to get it back, you know what I'm saying, to to a place to where I can be consistent as well. Um, I've been tugged in a lot of different directions um, in the last few months. Been working on a project, you know. Um, I just got cast in a play. So, nice. oh wow. Yeah, so uh, that's about as much as I can say about it because it's one of them like NDA type stuff. Um, but it's been crazy over here, you know what I mean? But just trying to empty out on my gifts, you feel me? What uh, what about the play? Do you want to elaborate on that at all, or is that something you want to talk about right now? Or I'm a I'm a I'm a leave it on the burner, you feel me? Because like I okay. said, I just signed a little NDA, so I gotta honor it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, 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 yeah. As soon as as soon as I'm able to talk about it, I'm gonna let, I'm gonna make sure y'all know first. Okay. Yeah, I'm curious about that, but no, that's that's cool. Don't yeah, do what you got. Yeah, no, I hear you. Yeah, yeah. It'll be live over here in Cali. So if anybody's gonna be out this way in the summer, um, you feel me? Hit me up for some tickets. Uh, let's talk about organization. You know, you say you you're being tugged in, you know, multiple different places, you know, areas in your life and then your career and you know family you know how do you stay organized right first thing i do is pray (laughs) uh the second thing i do though is um uh, keeping a routine is important um so just making sure that you have certain non-negotiable things in your day so for me i get up that early but i make sure that the first three hours of my day are mine and what i mean by that is um, it's mine to pray, read my Bible study. It's mine to work out. It's mine to do my laundry. It's mine to create, write down questions that I want to do research across the day for, um, check my email, read the paper, all that kind of stuff. Three hours, the first three hours of the day. That's what I do. My non-negotiable stuff. Um, I use two different planners. So one for personal, one for business. Of course, smartphones are little baby computers in our pockets nowadays. You just got to be like, yo, Siri, remind me of this. Um, I listen to the message in my music, my song right now. I don't like to procrastinate. And especially the fact that I have ADHD, it's really important for me to turn my to-do list into a game. So if I, you know what I'm saying? Like if I have a checklist, like I'm, I'm just making it into a game. Like how fast can I scratch this stuff off? Or... I make three different checklists for the day. I got three different dry erase um, stickers on my walls. You know what I'm saying? Like I cover that my walls in dry erase paper. You know what I'm saying? So I got one that's like my to-do list for the day. Then I got my to-do list for the quarter. I got my to-do list for the week. You know what I mean? And so I'm just like, all right, so out of those to-do lists, then I break it down even further. So like, really, I'm accomplishing like nine things. You know what I'm saying? By the end of the day, I'm like, wow, I can just wipe all that off and replace it with something else. So I'm always like moving something forward. So my goal every day is to wipe something off every board, you know, a quarter, something that moves towards my quarterly goal, something that moves towards my weekly goal, and then wipe all my daily goal stuff off. And if I, you know what I'm saying, if it's 9 p.m. and I'm like, oh, it's still like three things on my daily list then get it done, but set a time for yourself to stop so that you can roll that into tomorrow and not stress. You feel me? So it's all about prioritization and making sure that your objectives are always in front of you. Mm. Yeah. You know, I like, I like that you said that because I don't know if you guys know who Jordan Peterson is. He's an author. He was a professor and, you know, he does speeches and stuff, but, Mm-hmm. He, uh, you know, his, his background is mainly psychology, but he said one of the most important things that everybody can do. And it's like we, we take we think it's so simple. It's like, all right, I know what I got to get done tomorrow. I'm going to do this, this and that. But when you actually take the time to write it down and make it a goal and then you work on that goal and then you make a schedule around your goals to where it, it suits your needs. It's not a schedule right. that that makes you mad or frustrated. It's a schedule that's like, all right. Let me, if I could arrange my day, how I wanted to arrange it, how would I do it? You know, and just do it like that, set it up how you want to set it up, but have those things on that to-do list and be able to check them off. Cause that's, it's not just a big, you're not just accomplishing thing, but you, as you also get that moral victory 
in your right. head, when you see it on the piece of paper, when you check it off, when you complete it, when you cross it off, that does, you know, good things for your mental, your, you right. know, your psyche. And I mean, it's you know, stuff like, it'll be, it'll be stuff like people will be like, oh, I got to start my LLC this week. And it's like, fam, that's like a, that's like 40 steps. You know what I'm saying? Like you break down into a smaller amount. You feel me? Do like five of those steps every day instead of trying to do like 28 things. And then guess what? You burned out. You're not passionate about it or you're making you moving too fast and you're making mm. all unnecessary mistakes. You know what I'm saying? So doing it that way allows to balance grace. We're pushing yourself because now you're giving yourself the room to learn and, and ease <clears throat> into the responsibility that is going to take to stay organized. There's no point getting all this set up and then you're only able to stay consistent for a week. Mm. You didn't do anything, but you know what I'm saying? Like waste a week. So you might as well start small and then just add things. Don't try to add 40 things to your list all at once. Add 10 and then go from there. QNW audio podcast available on Anchor. Follow us at We Are QNW. So Vibes, you know, going back into uh going back into first plane, man, like have you worked with uh Kid Wiz before? Oh, Kid, it's a Kid Viz, Kid Viz. Yeah, it's Kid Viz. Um, yeah, Kid so Viz. I had yeah. worked with him on uh, the Seven record. He actually okay. shot that. And mm. so, um, you know, shout out to the homie Kid Viz. Shout out to, you know, the homie Miles Minnick. Um, he uh, actually introduced me to Kid Viz. Um, nice. So it was through that connection, um, working with him on that record. And I was just like, bro, you know, bro's a young cat, but he had his business together. And, um, you know, he was scouting locations, you know what I'm saying? And really just um, coming to it from a professional angle, but also just an open-minded angle, real easy to work with. Um, so, yeah, shout out to him. Nice. So y'all plan on doing more videos together in the future or what? Yeah. I mean, um, shout, like, again, shout out to them. Um, they just uh, created their own, like, collective out here. So um, they got what's called a Glow Collective. So... He's real busy with them, um, their content. Um, but of course, you know what I'm saying? You know, we're going to work together. It's definitely like when I start working with people, I look to initiate and maintain a relationship. You know, um, it helps me understand what to prepare for budget wise and creative wise, but also <laughs> finish product wise. You know what I'm saying? And just that continuity is important. So for sure. Yeah. Isn't that, isn't that so huge? Like that's, that's what every, a lot of things, so many things come down to is just relationships, you know, building yep. relationships, maintaining relationships, establishing relationships. You know, just, that's, that's it like, right there. I mean, it's all about right? my mentor, like literally like he, he broke it down like this. Like my OG was like, yo, like relationships are currency. Like it's more valuable to have that than money. You know, like for me, I'm, I'm I'm making my way in the real estate game and what I'm seeing is like like you can you can have you can have like two people put in offers on the same house and one of them might be like 10 grand less but the relationship you feel me like they might accept that lesser <laughs> offer so I mean relationships <laughs> is more important than oh, the pay to play you know what I mean That's true that's true Very true Definitely Definitely that's beautiful. That's I think that really stands out. So, what are you? Uh, you know, what are your plans on um, for first playing? You know, you said you were uh, going to go on IG Live uh, tomorrow to to do a lyric breakdown of the entire song. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. So basically, I want to pull up um, and and really just kind of break down, you know, where I'm coming from in each of the verses and why I ended the song the way I did. Um, really just kind of let people into the different portions of my life that I'm talking about. Um, definitely grab the song if you haven't yet. Um, it's available on all platforms. You feel me? Um, but really the ending of the song is my favorite. You know what I mean? Because all of, uh, all of the, the harmonies and stuff like that, that was, that was vocal tracks. So there's probably like 25 tracks just layered on top of each other. Shout out to, uh, <coughs> Shout out to um, Nick G, you know what I'm saying, from Nexus Audio, you know what I'm saying? He mixed 
all of that, making it sound saucy. So, yeah, tomorrow is the day. Tune in on IG. We're going to break it. Um, you know, that's a good question because I kind of just figured I would just go live <laughs> and see whoever's going to join. But, no, nah, if you're trying to kick it, um, I think I'm going to be going live at 830 uh, Pacific. Okay. So um, that seemed to be a good time for most people. So that's what I'm yeah. gonna do, and then just kick it until, until, until. Okay. <laughs> I t- I tell you what, I think I'm I'm supposed to go to the casino tomorrow, but I'm a I'm gonna hold off. I'm a I'm gonna tap into that. Oh. Uh, I mean, I'm gonna go. I'm a, like, if you go on tomorrow, I'll just I'll just go to the casino. I'll just go when you're finished. But I I love to tap into that because. For sure. Uh, hey, I, that's love. I, I, actually, I actually be working, so I'll tap into the recap. Yeah, me oh, yeah. too. Absolutely. Me too. me too, because for me it's like 5 a.m. Right now, <laughs> right now it's 6 a.m. Man, shout out to Mo, right. man. You, yeah. you were the ultimate supporter, bro. Definitely. For real. Definitely. Yeah. For real. So let's see, man. We got first, we got first fly. Like you was this song, or you know what? This is what I was thinking of. Okay. Now, you know, songs have been shorter a lot lately. Yeah. Um, hit, preferably hip hop songs have been shorter a lot lately. Yeah. And I and I can attest for that because, you know, I've been working on more shorter songs versus longer records. So was it easier to actually write this record or make it, you know, even though it was a longer record or, you know, I mean, four minutes is, you know, how songs used to be, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Back in the early 2000s, mid, even to the mid 2000s. But like, was it was it hard for you to create the song or, was, or did it just flow like flow like water? You know, um, hey bro, so much if she can make a, a 10 minute song. Are you gonna enjoy it? Too, yeah. Well, I'm gonna I'm I'm listen the to the whole. I'm gonna listen to the whole song regardless. I don't care if it's thirty seconds or thirty, hey, 30 minutes. Me. You know, for me, it's like uh, the time. Uh, sorry to cut you off, Salachi, but for me, it's Are like it's like the time. Uh, Zoe is right, but the time when the song is good doesn't yeah. matter how time is gonna be. It's gonna be good right. till the end. That's facts. And I'm I'm with you on that, which is why I still do songs of this length, because I know it's still people out there that's that's really going to tap into the whole experience. Um, I think for this song, I really it wasn't hard for me because I I stylistically broke it down into chunks. Right. So if you, when you listen, the, the hook is me singing. There's a pre hook. There's like a bridge. And then there's the two verses. And so there's so many different elements going on that you're never really bored. And neither was I when I was creating it. So this particular song, it wasn't really hard because some of the elements are repetitive, but that's also speaking to the authenticity behind the song and what was going on in my life and what might be going on in somebody's life who's about ready to take that jump. That's all you're hearing is those same thoughts over and over and over again. So the time is really well filled out with you know those other elements that i feel like people in hip-hop really don't use like that those pre-hooks bridges you know um outros you know right. those real deep like right in kind of structural elements that they're there for you to play with and the beat lended itself perfectly to it um at the end we constructed that from scratch but we used elements of the beat to put that together so I think it's just kind of opening your mind to the tools you have at hand too, because then that starts creating other ideas and you just, you know, you go from there, you make something that was available online, a beat that you can lease and make it your own. Right. right. <clears throat> this is, this is in fact true. <clears throat> she she out out tonight, yo. <laughs> oh, come on, big player. That's all she do. Nah. <laughs> yeah. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> When you are among like-minded people, it's easy to do. You feel me? So, shout out to that's, y'all. That's true, too. That's Appreciate, true too. It. Appreciate it. Appreciate it. Appreciate that. You guys got any questions for Any more questions for about First Flight? Yeah, I got one question. I got, I got, uh, so, last week we had uh, Loretta's Only on the podcast. And yeah. he said something that, <laughs> shout, out, shout out to Loretta's Only. Um, yes, sir. He had he has he said something that uh, I loved and we all agree what he said. I wanna I wanna listen to your talks on that. Mm-hmm. He said it's okay to fail, but it's not okay 
to fail without trying. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Like, honestly, I wish growing up that I was taught how to fail forward because Mm -hmm. growing up as kids, we're taught not to fail. We're taught to avoid failure. Like we're taught that failure is like the worst thing in the world. But actually, in reality, failure is great because it tells you what to work on and how to improve and what not to do. And so everybody want to talk about Thomas Edison. I'm not going to do that. You know what I'm saying? We all know Brody made like the light bulb like 40 million times. Right. But something that's more relevant, it's like, yo, like. Uh the guy who makes like all the paper plates that we eat off of, like he literally was in foreclosure, like before, like he was like, Hey, yo, like we went to the bank was like, yo, this is what I need. This is the idea I have. These are materials I'm going to use. One lender took a chance on him and Dixie plates now exist. You feel me? But that was like, he had to fail. You know what I'm saying? Like face flat. You know what I mean? And that's what I look at even in my life. You know what I mean? Like, you have to understand, like, all right, why did I fail? What's the lesson here? Because if you don't, then you're just going to have to repeat that lesson and get stuck. That's arrested development. You can't help nobody like that. Mm. I like that. This is definitely true. <clears throat> there's, hey, there's definitely a couple of mistakes I repeated that I had, to, uh, I had to repeat a couple of times before I really learned my lesson. But... <clears throat> You're 100 percent right when you say that. You know, they, you know, it's the old cliche. You know, you learn more from your mistakes than your success. Yeah. Like honestly, like all right. So I'm about to get real personal, real quick. So like all through high school, right? Like Zoe probably can attest to this. Like all through high school, like I was in all the accelerated, you know, AP, whatever, whatever. I mean, shout out to my parents. They taught me well. I was reading at a very early age. So all through school. I'm doing great because, I mean, I already, I'm, I'm ahead. Little did I know, I didn't know how to study. I was just used to being ahead. So I get to college and I actually have to study for the first time. I'm being exposed to knowledge I've never been exposed to before. And I'm wondering why I'm getting D's and C's. First time in my life. I'm like, yo, like this don't make no sense. I'm smart. Okay, yes, you are, but have you figured out how you learn yet? Have you figured out how you process information? When you start failing, then you start understanding, okay, well, maybe taking notes in class ain't my steez for real. Maybe I need to record this. Or maybe I need to figure out a different way to review so that it actually sticks in my brain. Like that forced me to evaluate and analyze my learning process, which then told me you have a learning disability this is how you get over it. You've just been exposed to information way before everybody else in your whole scholastic career. You've never had to study until this point. If I didn't start getting F's, I would have never known that, but I was taught my whole life, avoid failure, do whatever you have to do. Don't get an F, don't get a D, don't even think about a C. You feel me? So I'm not saying you should strive to fail, but if it happens, it's not the end of the world. You know what I mean? And so it's just all a matter of perspective. If you stay there, that's your fault. Be sad about that. But don't be sad about the opportunity to learn something and make sure you don't repeat it. It's like, it's like you said before, uh, it's a, a learning or a blessing. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a blessing or a lesson. Like, simply put, it's all about how you look at it because no matter if you spend the time after the failure being mad at yourself, being sad, or moving forward, the time is going to pass. Mm-hmm. It's all about how you're going to spend it. Yeah, what's done is done. It's how you're going to move. What's your next step? You know what I mean? That's all right. it's about. And the right. main thing with that next step is your attitude. You know what I mean? What's your, what's your attitude? What's your mindset? You know, because it's easy. <clears throat> and we've all been there. You know what I mean? You make a mistake and you're like, damn, what the fuck? You know, I messed up. Right. What was I thinking? Blah, blah, blah. I'm depressed. I'm down on myself. But, you know. All you're doing is wasting time. That's you're wasting that's time, yeah. all you're doing. Like, and like I said, like, it's balance everything. Like, take the time to feel whatever you need to feel. But don't stay there. You know what I mean? Yeah. You know, so with there, everything, there, give up everything you got. There was a, a, a guy, um, I don't know his name. Uh, he became a, a, a big, huge entrepreneur. And 
he says to his co-workers, I don't care if you fail and I don't care if you get mad or angry about it. Just take five minutes and get out of there. Because if you stay negative more than five minutes, your day is over. It is. I mean, if you think about it, like, how long does it take? You know what I'm saying? You leave some food in the fridge and it's getting moldy. How long does it take from that little tiny little white fuzz? You know what I'm saying? The strawberries. Strawberries be molding too fast and it just be pissing me <laughs> off. Can them mugs be like $20? And I'm like, yeah, hey, ain't cheap. Ain't like, cheap. I just bought you today. You know what I'm saying? So from the mm. time that you see that first little white little fuzzy to the one it's mm. covered in green, it's not that long. <laughs> It's not that long. And think about how much it takes. Like, even if the strawberries like in the corner, you know what I'm saying? Like, it ain't touching the rest. But throw the whole thing out. Yeah, so yeah. it's like the same thing is true with your day. You feel me? Exact same thing is true. If you just, if, if you let that negativity in, it's going to cover everything. Just consume everything else. And it just clouds your perspective and such that you can't benefit anybody. Not even yourself. So it's just like, yo, like, it's power and perspective, for real. Definitely, definitely. Thank you for the wise words. Oh. Word. All glory to God, man. Appreciate you. But I'm, I'm thinking about this, um, about this bread and butter, you know what I'm saying? You yeah. know, I got, I got some, you know, a couple of questions I want to ask you. A couple yeah. of closing questions. Um, <clears throat> now, the first one, you know, you're an artist. I think I think this would be a good one. So, you know, three artists, dead or alive, you can make a song with. Oof. Who would it Man. be? All right. So, first, uh, Prince. Okay. Um, yeah. I mean, I don't really have to explain that choice, hopefully. Uh, um, you don't. Second, uh, you said three, right? Yeah. Second, I would say Bob Marley. Um, not even just, you know, not even just from the whole like reggae angle, but just from the authenticity angle. You know what I'm saying? Still? Like he was himself, like all the way. You feel me? And, okay. you know, I can imagine just have, having a, like a <laughs> open mic, like extended session. <laughs> <laughs> like a three hour session just would not get old for them. So right. that would be that'd be dope. Um and last, let's pick somebody alive. Um I'm gonna go with my earlier option. Lauren Hill for sure. You know what I'm saying? Um it would be a tough race between either her or Rhapsody, to be for real. Um so that'd be a tough print. pick. So we got Prince, Bob Barley, Lauren Hill, Spongy Boz. Who who be going yeah. first on that song? Hey, man. don't don't disrespect her like that, man. Oh. <laughs> don't disrespect. You feel me? Like I, I can have. Let let me have the outro. You feel me? Like that's 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 good. Okay. Yeah, no, but that. um, honorable mention though, like producer wise, if I had a choice, um. Yeah. <laughs> That me, hey, you made it too hard. All right, so <laughs> two honorable yeah, mentions, man. Two honorable mentions. I'm gonna keep it to two honorable mentions. Jay Dilla and Dr. Dre. Mm. Mm. That'd be a stupid track. That, I mean, <laughs> come on, yeah. Bo- it would be bonkers. like, bro. Imagine just like, just, Zelda, just, like, imagine just the powerful message on that on yeah. that track. Right, right, right. Just playing on repeat. Yeah. Too much passion on that. Too much. I might drop I a just, tear at the end of that song. Probably, <laughs> probably, right. probably, probably man, like, probably listen, minute, we might minute uh, and a half into the song. Everybody might just throw down their weapons. We might just kumbaya the whole world. Yeah. For real, bro. Man. <laughs> My brother. If I only, if you. only. It could <laughs> that's, I love hey, you, That's man. the song title right there. If only. If only, mm. right? If only. I can hear Bob Marley. If only. <laughs> <laughs> him and Lauren Hill. Him and Lauren Hill on the... Uh, on the <laughs> man, oh, if, you it, wasn't, to get if it wasn't going to be a too. big old fight in the studio, I'd say bring the whole Fugees, but you feel me. Mm. Not. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, no. I, she, don't, she don't need them. 
<laughs> oh, bro. <laughs> oh, man. But yeah, yeah it would be a pleasure. I mean, there's so many people, you know what I mean, that I would love to work with. A lot of people don't know this, but I'm actually a really big, like, uh, pop funk fan. Like, I love, mm-hmm. I love, like, I, I rarely listen to rap, to be for real. Like, uh, um, I listen I, to I, that. I like that you said that. <laughs> Thank you. You know what I'm yeah, saying? Like, for, like listen to you. something else, family. Like, I don't care. Like, stay true to your craft or whatever. Like, do what you got to do, but please expose yourself to other types of music. Like, I, yeah. I'm seriously into classical music, pop, funk. I'm into synth. I'm into synth wave. I'm into so many different types, folk. Um, man, like, I mean... Right now, like people be like, yo, like name some bands. And I'll be like, Miami Whore. You know what I'm saying? I listen to um what was this? Uh Neon Trees. I listen to um this band called Holy Oysters. Like, if you got in my car, you would honestly be like, I think I'm in the wrong person's car. Because what? And I'd be like, nah, you <laughs> You know what I'm saying? Like sometimes when I'm rolling through, you know, people look around. Cause I play my music at volume thirty. That's the only way to listen to it for real. If you're in the car, yeah. But I'm, I'm like asking, everybody I'm in this red light can listen to this song volume too. Volume thirty. <laughs> volume thirty. I'm like, bro, everybody's gonna listen to this song. That's this so gonna it's be. Like, that's, that's, that's gonna to, like, be your, your next your next uh, your next pro- project. Volume thirty. Volume. Volume mm, that be I I can hear a dumb beat on there though. Hey bro, Sheesh. I I can I can he, I can hear dumb. I can hear Salachi being versatile on on that project, like bring all these influences <laughs> on the same project. That would be dope. That would be dope. I do have an EP that's coming up later on okay. this year. Okay. Um, that one is definitely boom back. Like I had to take that back. You know what I'm saying? To nice. For nice. one time, that's that's nice. one thing. At sixteen for sixteen, I was like, bro, like. I got you back in my pocket one time, but um, yeah, you too yeah. good. You too good with that. You too good with that. Like you, you be. I swear, yo, she'll be on there. She'll be like, all right, give me five minutes. Next thing you know, she's spitting like a twelve or a six. I'm like, yo, what? <laughs> yo, and it's 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 fire too. Like it's not even no bull. Like it's all lit. Like it's. I'm like, yo. That's hey, when I you do. hear, I mean, it's real talk though. Like as an artist, when you hear the right content, when you hear the right beat, the composition, it really does. Like you, you, you feel it. You know what I'm saying? Like yeah. people, it's not just a phrase. Like it's literally like I don't know how to describe it, but it's almost like a tangible. Like if you look at some of my old 16 for 16s, like you'll see me like sit up straighter a little bit. Like I'm like, oh shoot! Like <laughs> wait a minute, you feel me? Like. Yeah, you know, so it's 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 an experience. Like I'm just I'm grateful to God that this this is my gift. This is how I can connect. You know what I mean? Despite the fact that I didn't listen to hip hop like that, I'm not from the hood. I'm saying my my family didn't raise me on rap. Like they was like, "What are you doing? Why are you talking so fast? Like (laughs) wearing your hat like that? What are you concert? You know, yeah." (laughs) <laughs> but it's good that you can take your musical background, combine it with your experiences, and put it into something real. You yeah. know what I mean? That's yes. what makes good music. You know what I mean? Like my um being a band geek in high school, you know what I'm saying? Playing every instrument like that, learning to read music. You it better made, off. Yo, it made everything so much easier when I went to the studio because now I have a frame of reference. You know what I'm saying? Right. So many cats go in there and they're like a hashtag like what's that and it's like yo it's a shark family like <laughs> you know what I'm saying like you know what I'm saying? and I don't I don't laugh because I'm like he just don't know theory right. you know right. what I mean yeah, so it's definitely. just like the stuff I take for granted for knowing you know cat, you know, other people just don't know and so it, it just helped open my mind to like different arrangements ways to you know time signatures different things that people wouldn't think about if you didn't have that other background Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Uh, um, Mo, Charlie, I want to ask you any questions. Any other questions? Yeah. If you if you could have uh, to make a song for a movie or a TV show, sync placements. Mm. Which which one it would be? Yeah. It don't it don't matter. It can be past or present. Past or present. 
or something definitely, that doesn't all right, exist. So I'm, a, I'm a Marvel fan, so definitely, like, if I get a song in a Marvel film, I'm retiring. Like, y'all will not be able to find me. No, I'm playing. I'm playing. No, y'all be able to find me. But, like, I'll probably you know be sitting in the corner crying somewhere because I'll just be like, oh, my God, I did it. Like, all right, so for show Marvel. Um, okay. TV shows. For real, for real, honestly, I don't watch TV like that. Um, honestly, if BET was like, yo, I'd be like, what show? <laughs> Let's let's get that straight. Let's show you that. <laughs> but um, but I would say honestly, like I would want like a sports placement because mm. like a like a video game placement would be dope because two like K or like Madden, yo, or something. something like that. FIFA, because FIFA. and you know why? From a creative perspective, people hear it every time they play. They're only every gonna watch time. that show once. So it's just like half of my music library came from FIFA and. All these other games that I played, yo, like some of that stuff. Right. FIFA, so it's just like, yo, like, they're gonna keep playing it every single time they play that game. They hear your music. Mm, so I would yo, listen. yo, that's hard. Yo, listen to yo. She's spitting gems right now, yo. She said, yo, the video game. You gonna get more views, yo? Come on, and playing, you get more money. Bro. I mean, yeah. think about it. Like, would you rather have your song on one NBA game or two K? 2K, yeah. 2K. Both are close. great. Feel me? But if I had a choice, give me the game. That's like, I'm going to give you an example real quick. I had a, a friend of ours. I think Zoe and Mo, they know this guy, but he, he showed me a song. And, you know, it's not the type of song that you hear on the radio or that mm-hmm. it's not exactly hip hop. It's more like rock, you know, mixed mm. with some rap elements. But like, like a kid rock kind of situation. Not even like no, more like fast paced, more like uh like screamo, like kind of like oh, okay, a little okay. bit of dark, you know what I mean, like some loud. Yeah. But like I was telling them like, yo, okay, this might not be our vibe, but don't tell me like you know I'm telling you can hear this song in a video game, you can hear yeah. this in Madden, you can hear this in 2K. Like if you heard it in 2K, you'd be like, all right, this is dope, you know what I mean. Yeah. So it's all about you know, so in the right place sometimes, you know what I mean. The song can really pop off you know the, that's if facts. it's got the right fit like you never know who's watching <clears throat> yeah that's facts too never that's facts because honestly like like don't get me wrong anybody watching like it, tv syncs like let's talk you feel me like i'm not gonna sit there and be like no but if i had a choice right. you know what i mean like um it's it's a niche that's already primed for you if you think about it it's like Set the age group, the the demographic, they're already interested in sports. Right. You know what I mean? Like 95% of the people that listen to hip hop music are basketball fans. So it's it's just like, yo, like, take advantage of that. <laughs> you yeah, know, no, not no. just with 2K either. Like, there's hundreds of franchises that are uh, affiliated yeah, with basketball. Be, uh, it could be Call of Duty. You know, it could be, you know, there's plenty of games. Facts. It could be Apex. It could be all of these other games that's popping off. Something Apex. You know what I'm saying? Um, what's that one that everybody was playing? Oh, man. I oh, still just, yeah, that joint. I still want my music on Grand Theft Auto. I always want a song of mine on Grand Theft Auto. Oh, Grand Theft Auto. Yeah. 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 Forever. Auto, man, with them sim-like running characters, bro. <laughs> GTA, man. <laughs> I hear one of my songs on GTA. That game, that game changed <laughs> the world. Dude. Hey, you, you have you have to send them more of the line. Nah, I don't hey. care. I don't care what they want to hear. I don't care. Yeah, what send they them more of line. I don't that would care. Be perfect for that game, for real. Definitely. definitely. Oh, I can hear your songs on the uh, GTA radio. Yeah. <laughs> listen. They listen gotta make now. a. Um, I'm surprised they haven't made like a like a. Well, maybe they have. Like a Central American kind of themed one, where it's like, mm. <laughs> where it's like low key cartel. Yeah, it looks like. I mean, let's make it clear. I don't advocate for drugs or freaking neither, violence. Neither, but, neither do we. <laughs> but it's like, yo, like I'm surprised that franchise hasn't like pretty much copied Narcos. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's yeah, probably why, why, why it's taking so long. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, because they probably don't want to get you know. Shout out. <laughs> so listen, so, so I definitely um uh, 
you know, this this Zoom this Zoom call about to wrap up. So yeah. um I definitely you know, Vaz, you know, you always welcome here whenever, you know, so anytime, yes, sir. whenever, Appreciate anytime, without, you know, you don't, you don't even got to ask. You already know. We want to know, uh, we want to know where we, you know, where the people can find you at. Oh yeah. So for music, um, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, um, definitely all the same. So at Salachi Vaz, that's at S-O-L-A-C-H-I, V as in Victor, O-Z. And then on my business side, if you guys need anything to do with website maintenance, website creation, copywriting, um, any type of professional or personal biography, um, hit me up at SalachiWritesInc.com or on Instagram and Twitter at SalachiWriteInc. So that's S-O-L-A-C-H-I-W-R-I-T-E-I-N-K. And then also on LinkedIn, hit us up. Uh, so so grateful for your time, Vaj. Um likewise. Yeah. Definitely we'll, yeah, be, this was, we'll be in touch. Yes. This was yeah, fun. Man. It was, it was my, good to see you, Salachi. Good to it's talk a, to you. Good to see you. It's a privilege, um, man. Like I said, like minded people, it always just comes out. You feel me? It's always an honor to be on here with y'all and, and chop it up and you know, be an asset to the community. So Exactly. Yeah. That's yeah. that's what I was telling. That's what I was telling the guys. You know, I don't want. You know, I don't ever want any of any of these podcast episodes to feel like we're just asking you questions or whatever. Like we actually <laughs> wanted to feel gen, genuine. You know, want to just feel like a regular conversation, even if we just yeah. met yesterday. You know what I'm saying? So, like, yeah. So sure. you are you already know the vibes, but yeah, vibes. Oh, you already know. Thank you so much, and you have a great night. All right. All right, for sure. All right, family. Well, Be all right. Uh, you you. So, guys, this was Quarantine Network. You know what it is. We'll see you on the next podcast. Definitely. Follow your boy, Body Bag Zoe, at Body Bag Zoe. Follow at Charlie Pockets, charlie.pockets, and at mo underscore raise underscore beats with a Z at the end. You already know the vibes. At we are Q&W.